Okay, today's notes are in section 2.3, uh, polynomial functions of higher degree with modeling. Our objectives, graph polynomial functions, distinguish end behavior of polynomial functions, find zeros of polynomial functions, use the interme intermediate value theorem, and model polynomial functions. Keep in mind, today is day one of 2.3 uh, notes, so we'll be staying right here and graphing polynomial functions and distinguished end behavior. But more so, this is about an end behavior thing. So if we're looking at our functions as they go around, that's what we're looking at. Now, polynomial functions of higher degree with modeling. Graphs of polynomial functions. A degree one polynomial graphs as a linear function. That's a slant line. A degree two polynomial graph as a quadratic function. That's a parabola. Beyond these, we have polynomial functions of higher degree. They include cubic functions and quartic functions. Polynomials of degree three and degree four, respectively. This is my cubic f of x equals x cubed, and this is my chord of x of x equals x to the fourth. Now, a polynomial function of degree n can be written in the form of p of x equals a sub n x to the n plus a sub n minus 1 plus times x to the n minus 1 plus a sub n minus 2 times x to the n minus 2, and so on, all the way down to a sub naught. Now, where a n, or my leading term, cannot be 0. Now, I want to emphasize something, that p, when x is 0, is equal to a sub naught, which is my initial value of my polygon, I mean, excuse me, my polynomial. But you have to keep in mind that 0 in a value is my y-intercept. So this is my y-intercept value. Now, for definition of vocabulary of polynomials, each monomial is in the sum of a sub n, x n. Now, these are my terms separated. And if we sum these up, each, and this is the separate terms of each of the polynomial. A polynomial function written in this way with terms in descending degree is written in standard form. The constants, a sub n, a n minus 1, and so on, are coefficients of the polynomial. The term a sub n x to the n is the leading term and a sub naught is the constant term or aka the y-intercept. Keep in mind when we're looking at these functions that the leading term a sub n x to the nth is going to be the main thing that gives our function its shape, specifically about its end behavior. Now, a reminder, a sub, n, a sub naught is both the initial value of the function, p of 0, and the y-intercept of the graph. So, graphing transformations of monomial functions. Describe how to transform the graph in an appropriate monomial function, f of x is equal a sub n x to the n into a graph of the given function. Sketch the transformed graph by hand and support your answer with a grapher. Compute the location of the y-intercept as a check on the transformed graph. Now, keep in mind, I have a parent function, f of x equals x cubed, and I have my other parent function, d of x equals x to the fourth. Now, my g of x here is equal 4 times the quantity x plus 1 quantity cubed. Now, I have the vertical stretch by a factor of 4 and a horizontal shift to the left, 1 unit. My y-intercept, when I place 0 in for x, ends up being 4. So I have my y-intercept of my function is 0, 4. And my graph of my stretched function is my red graph. And this, my blue function is my parent function. Now, if I'm doing the b uh, side, I would like you to turn it off and to give me my descriptions of my function and to give me my y-intercepts. Okay, welcome back. I've got h of x equals the opposite of x minus 2 quantity to the fourth power plus 5. Now, keep in mind, this is a parent function, x to the fourth. So if I'm looking at my description of what happens with my parent function to this new function, x axis reflection with a shift right 2 units and a shift up 5 units. Now, if I'm looking for my y-intercept, I place 0 in for x, and I evaluate and find it's negative 11. So my y-intercept is at 0, negative 11. In example 2, we see that we can 
What can happen when simple monomial functions are combined to obtain polynomial functions? The resulting polynomials are not mere translations of monomials. What we need to be aware of <coughs> when making these combinations is that the lower degreed values or terms in my polynomial affect the interior behavior of my function. The highest degree term in my polynomial function affects the end behavior of the function and the overall shape. So let's talk about that. I have a cubic and a linear or identity uh, function added together and there there's no extrema. I have continual increasing from negative infinity to infinity and the origin near the origin this function is uh, influenced by my h of x equals x value and my n behavior is influenced by the g of x which is x cubed so my x cubed is really telling me what's happening with my n behavior and my function is odd just like the function that makes it so this is generally what the function is looking like but keep in mind that the plus x is really affecting the interior portion of the function, the inside, the middle of the function. Um, and the end behavior is determined by the highest degree polynomial, highest degree term, I should say, in my polynomial. Now, if I look at this with my other function, okay, I've got the cubic identity, um, local maximum, local minimum. I'm able to find those. And I'm looking at my increasing and decreasing. Okay, and near the origin, it's influenced by negative x. Now, this is different from the adding x. I'm subtracting x, and it put a bump in the road in my function. My end behavior is influenced by x cubed. Function's odd, just like uh, the functions that make it. But look what happened here. I got a subtract x, which is a negative slope, and I've got a negative 1 slope going down. Uh, kind of affecting the middle part of my function, and my end behavior is affected by x cubed. Now, polynomial functions defined in, are defined in continuous for all real numbers. Now, how many zeros do cubic functions have? When I'm looking at a cubic, the highest degree term is 3, so it will have at most three zeros. And then one less than that degree, highest degree term will be its local extrema. So at most, its local extrema would be 2. And if I look at this, my local extrema here is an example of the second function. And here, it doesn't. It, this looks like it's decreasing. Here, it's increasing, but there's no local extrema. But here, as it changes, there's the local extrema again. Now, how many zeros do you, a quartic functions have? If I look at my quartic, I've got uh, just something that looks kind of like a parabola generally, but then it can get really kind of crazy uh, with my um, n behavior going to positive infinity and my n behavior going to negative infinity here in these examples. But it has just as many zeros as its highest degree. At most, it could be four. And then its extrema, at most, it could be one less than the zeros, which is three. Now, to go along with that, the local extrema and zeros of polynomial functions, a polynomial function degree n has at most n minus one local extrema and at most n zeros. So we got to keep that in mind. Now, n behavior. When I'm talking about end behavior, I'm talking about what happens at the end. And my theme today has been about end behavior. And if I have an odd degreed you know, uh, function, I will have the end behavior split. One will go to positive infinity, the other will be negative infinity. If I have a even uh, degreed function, it'll be both going to infinity or both going to negative infinity. So how do we evaluate this? We worry about the highest degree portion of the function in the term. The leading coefficient, the only thing I'm worried about that affects the end behavior, it's the sign. So if we're looking at this for my functions, my limits in problem one, if I break these down this way, I see that as the limit of the function approaches positive infinity in A, 
my um, y value goes to infinity, my y value goes to negative infinity for negative infinity. But the things that are going to affect where it goes for my end behavior is the degree of the function, that's thing one, because the degree is going to determine if the end behavior is split, meaning if it's an odd function, that I don't care what happens, if it's an odd function, it'll do something like this and go off like that, because it'll go down as it goes negative infinity and go up as it approaches infinity, or it will come in like this if it's an odd and go down if it's the other way. Uh, it'll always be split. An even function will either be like this or if I'm looking at my stuff, it'll come in like this. And the even function's behavior, they both behave the same way as they approach negative infinity and positive infinity. So we've got to make sure we keep that in mind. Now, that's the visual portion that, as I'm talking about it, but I also have them listed here as we look at that last term that you should be doing on your own. Um, so we look at this in three, and we're able to find that those are my end behaviors as my function approaches positive infinity and negative infinity. But these are the things, these are the things we should be picking up on in this section. Please read them, but paraphrase them, but you're responsible for this material. Now, we're on our last page for notes today. Example three, comparing the graphs of polynomial um, polynomials in its leading terms. Now, we're really just finding out that the leading term is the thing that governs the shape of the function at its end behavior. And how we're going to do this, we're going to graph these two functions. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to graph these two functions here in three. So I got those functions graphed. As I zoom out, so I'm going to go to three, and I'm going to zoom out, hitting enter, and I see the function kind of adjust out. And you know, I still see this funky stuff that's created because of the things that are added to my leading coefficient, or leading term, I should say. And I zoom out one more time, though, and I start seeing that the end behavior shape takes over my function, and it is driven, the shape of the function, the end behavior shape is driven by the leading term. Both odd degree functions have similar end behavior. Okay, as I approach negative infinity and positive infinity, they are the same. So in sufficiently large viewing windows, the graph of the polynomial and the graph of its leading terms appear to be identical. The leading term dominates the behavior of the polynomial. Absolute value of x approaches infinity. Now, the leading term test for polynomial end behavior. For any polynomial function f of x, the limits as the limit of f of x as x approaches infinity and the limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity are determined by the degree n of the polynomial and its leading coefficient. Okay, and that degree being odd, even, and whether the coefficient is positive or negative. So I'm really looking at this. The results are all about the limit as x approaches infinity and negative infinity, pay attention to the leading term. It dominates the behavior of the polynomial. If the term has got an odd power, okay, I will have it work like this. It'll split my function. And if it's positive okay, or negative, I have to pay attention to that because that will adjust my function. If it's an even term degree, It'll both be up or both be down, and that's all about whether my coefficient is a positive or negative value. Now, our last one, our last example here today is talking about example four, applying polynomial theory. Um, I have them graphed. My A is graphed, and I want you to really come up with graph the polynomial in a window showing its extreme and zeros and its end behaviors. Describe the end behavior using limits. So now I've got two extrema. Here's my max. Here's my min. I don't need you to find it. I know you can find it if I give you a calculator. You have three zeros, one, two, three, and this is the max possible for a cubic. It's end behavior. The limit of f of x is equal to the infinity and the limit of x uh, as x approaches negative infinity is negative infinity. So I have to know as it goes down to negative infinity, it goes down, positive infinity goes up. Those are things I'm looking for. 
And here in this function, same idea, and we're getting those three extremes. Uh, it's the max possible. It's three extreme of four zeros for a quartic. So that's what I would need you to know. And in a nutshell, that's notes today. I'm sorry it was kind of quick, but that's what we were able to cover. It's all about end behavior and, and how the leading term, um, its degree, and its the sign on its coefficient drive our end behavior of polynomial functions. Have a great day.